is that we've been, some of us, we've been in church three months, two weeks, ten years, and we've listened to so many messages. But sometimes as I ask God that, why is there no change? You know, someone who listen to message Sunday morning, by the time that they are in the car driving home to McDonald's, it's just flew out of the head. And that, that has been my question. And that is why my my actual call, my call, if, if, if you, you, you sort of follow the way I, I'm not the usual preacher, by the way. I, I, I used to I, I tell pastor, I'm not a preacher. I'm not, the, I'm not the, pastor Ruben is a preacher, mom is a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I, I just, I just come and tell you things. And, and I, what I hear is what I tell you. So I'm not the, like the, <laughs> they're just words. I'm just, I'm just telling what I'm, <laughs> No, yeah, 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 exactly. I said, what I hear is what I tell you. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, amen. So, no, no, I mean, uh, uh, there are people I, I admire, people who, when they start preaching, I, I, I totally, I say, wow, I wish I could just preach like them, but everyone is different. Me is me, I don't have to be someone else. So, and w- w- when, when you're comfortable in your own shell, then you're comfortable. You don't have to be someone else. So you don't have to copycat someone. And by copycatting, we've seen the kingdom going downwards. You know, people doing things just because someone yesterday was throwing a coat and then you come and throw the same coat. So, it's <laughs> amen. God put something on my heart. Yeah, as I say, as when, when you follow the way, I, I tend to, to speak about things which I want to pray about. So, my message is always, always leads to prayer, to praying. It's because I, 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 all it is, I give you information that can empower you to pray more effectively. Because sometimes when you play, when you pray blindly, you hit the miss. But when you pray with knowledge, it makes a difference. And I've seen it makes a difference. So I give you information which I've heard and knowledge that can empower you to pray more effectively, effectively, and then you can achieve results. Amen. Praise the living God. God was speaking to me as I'm walking. You see, the but I am walking on myself. And when when you're walking on yourself, God speaks to you through stuff, and then you go and share them out. Most of the messages, actually, God speaks to you. They're about you. Then after they've worked it, you go and share them out. So this week I was I was meditating. I was meditating about generational traits. If those who have been here in the morning, we've been praying along those lines. Generational traits. Generational traits. Let's say this. Pardon me, I need to set my phone. It's just giving me trouble to. Traits, from the dictionary, traits are, are things which make up a person. Your characteristics, your identity. When someone looks at you, you are peculiar. And those things which people see in you, they say, oh, she is a happy person, he is a jolly person, he is a vibrant person. The things that you portray to other people are actually your traits. Amen. I'm trying to deal, deal, deal with English here because I'm not an Englishman. So, and <laughs> it's my second language. <laughs> you know, back, back home, even here, people had that mentality of laughing at people who can speak English well. And until when you travel in Europe and you find that every country speaks its own language, you go on yapping your English and they look at you like, huh? So, then you know that everyone has their own language. So, so if you're not efficient in a foreign language, it's good enough. As long as you understand what I'm saying, it's good enough. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't have to stretch myself. So 
if I say that I'm flying to Uganda, flying to Uganda, when I mean flying, at least you make it up with the whole story and you understand. So, <laughs> those, so I was flying to Uganda last week. Say, so, yeah, <laughs> we're flying to. <laughs> but then when I mention a plane, they say, hey, the guy meant flying, actually. <laughs> Amen. Let's get let's back. Generation traits. So, uh, If we can open with, I want to, to, to take my argument from First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. If you can open that with me, First Second Corinthians chapter five. I want to make that my point of argument, sort of thing. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Ah, yeah. Now, we look inside and, and what we see is that anyone, and anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Is created new. The old life is gone. A new life. Ah, what's that word? Bajuns. <laughs> look at it. Can you give me the KJV uh, as well? And, and, and yeah, and, and, and K. <laughs> now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Go backwards. Uh, no, you, you, you've gone ahead of yourself. Go back to 17. I just, I just, okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what the Bible says. Behold, all things have become new. We have become a new creation. But my point here is, we've come to be a new creation. The pace at which things change are not the same. In the spirit, you instantaneously, instantly become new when you come to Christ. Instantly. But in the physical, some things take time to change. You, do you agree with me? The cha other changes take time. The spirit things be are instantaneous. You come to Christ now, things are changed. You are switched automatically. But other changing is a working progress. You have to work on it. Now, one of the main things where you have to work, God gave you what they call a mouth. My brothers don't say they call it a mouth. A mouth. God gives you the power through his spirit to pray, to speak into your life and begin to change other things. Other things are dependent on you to change them. You now begin, you've been given the power, you've been empowered by the spirit to begin and change things by your mouth. Do we get that? And it clearly says in the Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 18, 20, 21, if you can go there for us. It says, word kills, word gives life in the version. Therefore, no, don't like it. Words, words kill, words give life. They are either poison or fruit. You choose. So now you begin to demarcate after you've come to Christ. You begin to demarcate to what? You want in your life and what you don't want in your life. And want in your life, what you, you don't want in your life, you cut off with your mouth. What you want in your, in your life, you speak into yourself with your mouth. And as a process, everything becomes new. Amen? Do we agree with me? That's my argument. Now, most of the battles that we're facing in life, as I was meditating upon myself, most of the battles we're facing in life, are inherited traits. Things which we are born with without our acceptance. Now, these things, some of them are good, some of them are bad. You know what I'm saying? So, we are born with bad and good things. So, for example, I was born a black man and I'm proud to be black. So, I don't want to be white. That was the, uh, uh, <laughs> I was born black, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. It's something I inherited. Amen? So, when you come to Christ, 
you demarcate between the good and the bad things and you cut yourself off from the bad things. Now, traits are very, very, very key in our lives. Things with which we have inherited. Some of them can go back 10 generations. That you give birth to a child and she begins to do stuff which you've never done and you're asking yourself, where is she, is he getting this stuff? But if you know your family tree and then you look backwards and say, ah, he resembles his uncle, so and so. So you see the thing in the blood. I'll give you an example, which is which something which, which hit me so much. Uh, my stepfather was my dad who brought me up. He was a very hardworking, he comes from a very hardworking family, very hardworking man. There were about, I think, five of them, all hardworking. And, but among them, he was hardworking, very successful, rich. Some of his brothers were not as successful as, as, he, as, he, as he was. But among those brothers, one of them was actually a born thief. The guy was just was a thief on the village, and it was so embarrassing. You know, your, your brother is known as a, a big man on the village, and you, you're, you're a thief to the extent that he was killed when he was stealing. They caught him stealing my talk in someone's garden, and he was, he was chopped. So, now, down along the line, my mother had my three siblings. We're not of the same dad. And then out of the blue, my brother comes last. My little brother is the last one. When he gets around eight, six, eight, nine, ten, the guy begins to nick stuff. And I'm saying to myself, <laughs> how, where did he... We know we, we weren't poor. We had everything that we, we wanted. But the guy was just stealing things. And if, if, by then I wasn't even born again. But then I, I, I said to myself, mm, this guy's like Anko Katerega. And surprising, they, they, they had the same names. Same names. Traits, things which we carry on. But thank God he came to the law. He, 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 he got born again and that stuff was cut off. But the things which are troubling us, troubling our children, they're coming from generations. But the funny thing, some of the, some, even some of the things, they're coming from you, from me. The, th <laughs> the funny thing, we don't want to see our mirror. When you see your child doing the bad stuff which you used to do, you don't want to see the bad stuff which you used to do. You, do you get me? It, you can clearly see that, eh, I think I used to do this. But you want to brush it off because you don't want to see your mirror side in your child. Now, instead of you identifying it and tackling it and cutting it off, because now you're seeing that you're passing on a trait which is not of God. Praise the living. This, thing, this stuff is powerful. And unless we, that's what I've been, unless we cut it off, it just appears. Whoop, some people come from a generation way back, like if you come from the royal family, there's stuff that I won't even go there. But then you see it appearing. Oops. Generation traits. Now, this can be so many. This can be physical. Won't it surprise you that you can be two parents, you are as short as me, and then you give birth to children who are tall. And then you say, hey, where did this, this tallness come from? It's a trait. So some of them can be physical. Some of them can be emotional. Some of them can be spiritual. Some of them can be just character. You know, you, you actually see someone's character in your child or in you. But we have the power to change some of them. You cannot change the physical. So you cannot grow any taller. I can't grow any taller. You know, <laughs> I can't go back and become white if I wanted to become white. So the physical you can't change. But we can change the spiritual and other characteristics which are not of God. We can break them. And that's, what, that's, what, that's what we've been doing this morning. We can de-associate ourselves from these traits and start a totally new generation. I'm going to give you a, a, a examples of things which can be passed on. Do you know that success can be passed on? Success can be passed on. So as is failure. A child can be born. They work so hard, so, so hard. 
But because somewhere down the line, he picks up a, a trait of failure that was passed on him. He just he keeps on failing. You can see someone who has a trait of success. They can come from the village, not speaking any English, like in where I come from. They come to town. Within two years, they become the, the talk of the city. Success from nowhere. There's now a little boy in my country. He's called Fresh Kid. If you've heard about this little girl. From Fresh Kid. This boy comes from a very poor family. No, none known. Very poor. Someone picked him from, the, from, from, from a club. He's six years old. Seven years old. He was trying to, to earn a living for his parents by, by, by singing in a club. And someone picked him up. He promoted him. Now he's become the talk of, of town. He's been given a... Uh, what, what, is give, uh, 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 a scholarship. That's, thank you, you people went to school. You helped me here. He's been given a scholarship from P1 until he gets tired. And in the, one of the most expensive schools in the city. So you see that when now, if you go and dig deeper in the family, there was a success trait. And nobody from nowhere Premature death can be passed on. I saw a family on TV. This was so scary. Because it was a, during a burial service. And the, the parents had just died. The mother and father, they died in a, an accident plus other friends. And when the preacher was saying, actually, yeah, they, were, they was going to pray, the, pray for them. He said, we need to pray for this family. Because in the entire family, no one gets to the age of 40. They've all died below 40, 40 years. All of the, the, the man died at 38. The woman was 37. And looking back, everyone never makes it beyond 40. So these things can be passed on. Broken relationships can be passed on. Wildness. You know when someone's just wildness, when people just have a spirit of wildness, it can be passed on. Curses can be passed on. Same as blessings can be passed on. Poverty can be passed on. A God, God loving people, God, godliness can be passed on. As I always testify that uh, my grand, grand, my grandfather was a man who, who loved to pray. That man used to, to sleep in church. His life, when he wasn't in the garden, you'd, you'd find him that in church. And our, the generation has come, our, the generation, the grandchildren, most of us have ended up at least in church somewhere. So godliness can be passed on. Mental health can be passed on. It can be generation trait. You, if for, for those of you who do history, you, you, there was, there's a, a spirit of mental health in the royal family. And they, there used to be kings who, who used to come up and they just go berserk in the royal family. And when they look back at the family tree, King so and so was, was had a mental health, so these things can be passed on. But we have the power to break them in the name of Jesus. Trouble causes can be passed on. The spirit of trouble causing, you know, everywhere someone goes in a company, in a school, they are the ones who are causing trouble. When that person appears in a company, you know there's trouble. Trouble is just going to arrive. And when you trace it back, maybe that was the, that's the way the, the mom used to be, that's where the dad used to be, that was the, the uncle. Trouble causes. Leadership can be passed on. It's a trait that can be passed on. That's why when I was so shocked when I went to the Netherlands and someone took me to a, mem a, a memorial site where the first founders of America were hiding before they went to America. The founding fathers of America before they went to find found America. They first hid in, in the Netherlands. There was a church where, where they were, I think they were being persecuted and they were hiding there for some time before they actually made it to America. To, 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 well, America was already there, but the thing said they founded America. They were already a native Indians. But the founding fathers of America, as they call themselves. So when I went to that plaque, to, to the placard, and you could see the lineage from, from, the, from them. This lineage comes, that's where the bushes come from. And surprisingly, that's where Obama's mom comes from. 
<laughs> yeah. Obama's mom is linked to the founding fathers. So you don't get in office out of the blue. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, this is Obama's mom's grandmother. This is Obama's, Obama's mom's father. And then this is Obama's mom. In the lineage of the founding fathers. So you see the guy popping up from there. He's, oh, a black man from Kenya has popped up. It's in the lineage. Leadership can be passed on. Praise the living God. So let's not play about with traits. This morning, if you're here, we've already prayed for you. We've been breaking these things off our lives. We are laying a new foundation, not for just for us, but for our children. We are cutting them off all this stuff in the name of Jesus. He says in James 5, 16, he says, confess, conf confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Amen? Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That We've been praying this morning for one an another that we may be healed and set free from the generational traits. And he says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. When I pick up the word righteous man, righteous, this is the power which you are given when you come to Christ through the Holy Spirit. Amen? You become righteous, therefore you are empowered to avail much in prayer. You are empowered to avail much in prayer and cause effect in your generation. Hallelujah. It says now, in Christ we are all new creation. Now we are a new creation. So it's now your duty to take a diligent duty. You look at yourself and you, you, pay, you say, this I don't want. You can even list them down. You look, go and do, a, what, what do you call it, SWOT analysis of yourself. And you say, Lord, for this one I don't want. This one is what I want. And you begin to pray accordingly. It's now in the, in the hand, the power is in your hands to decide where you what your life wants to be. He says, life and death are in the power of your tongue. You choose. So you make the choice. Hallelujah. And that's why it was so vital. That's why when you go to the Bible, you see the Bible lines up what we call genealogies. They say so and so begat, so and so, so and so begat, so and so. These things didn't come in the Bible for no reason. They want to they wanted to show the family tree so that we can know exactly how the line of Christ came. So they were for a purpose. So you if, you, if you know where you're coming, you can go back in your own family tree and look at the things which are in your family tree and take responsibility, take and break these things because these things are real and these things can affect you. Hallelujah. Okay, we're just going to take the next few minutes and just pray. I've given you, I've given you the information for you to pray. That's all I do. I give you, I empower you to pray. I, I, I could have told you a good story that one, one time David was walking in the garden and then he met a bear. No, I just want to empower <laughs> Give you knowledge for you to pray. Amen? So for those of, the, those of you who are not here in the morning, we're just going to just pray that it go for a little bit and then I'm going, I'll be mentioning these things and, and if that thing, if you think it's in your line, you just break it as we pray. Amen. Take over, Lord. We've already prayed this morning, Father. Shake your seat there, Rabbi. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we plead your blood upon your people, plead your blood, your precious blood upon your, our children, upon our children's children, and we come against these things, Father, that are generation traits, we are making a foundation for a new generation, not just for us, but for the generations to come. In the name of Jesus, we come against sicknesses. Cancer that comes in the family, sicknesses, diabetes that follow in the family. They are not my portion. They are not your portion. Break that yourself. Break off that. Cancers that come and follow up, you know. Sicknesses that come from nowhere. We break that off in the name of Jesus. We come against anger. 
unmanageable anger. You know, anger that comes from nowhere. You see people who are angry for no reason. Generational traits. We deny that. We refuse it. Rabba Sikata. We come against the spirit of no favor. No favor when someone goes and they are not loved. Every, you know, when there's no favor upon their lives, you know. We rebuke that we come against it in the name of Jesus. We come, we break every curse that's generation, every curse of any kind, we break it by the blood of the Lamb. Every curse, we break it, we break it, we break it. Robo secret, every curse, whatever, from the 10th generation.